Aretha Franklin, hailed as the Queen of Soul, remains one of the most celebrated singers in history, amassing the admiration of millions. Despite her monumental success, her life was marked by critical mistakes in her career, relationships, and life choices, ultimately leading to her passing in 2018. This narrative delves into the untold stories of Aretha Franklin's life, accompanied by rare photos. Born on March 25, 1942, to Barbara and Clarence Franklin, Aretha's family initially presented a facade of perfection to the outside world. Her father, a Baptist minister and circuit preacher from Shelby, Mississippi, and her mother, a talented pianist and vocalist, seemed to have it all. However, beneath this exterior, the marriage was strained by Mr. Franklin's infidelities, leading to their separation in 1948. This divorce left a profound impact on young Aretha, introducing the trauma of having divorced parents at a tender age. Following the separation, her parents went their separate ways, with her mother returning to Buffalo while Aretha stayed with her father in Detroit. The challenges intensified when Aretha lost her beloved mother to a heart attack on March 7, 1952, just before her 10th birthday. The void left by her mother's death was partially filled by women like her grandmother Rachel and Mahalia Jackson, who helped her father raise the children. Aretha's father played a crucial role in her life, providing support and encouragement. He took her on gospel caravan tours, showcasing her talents in various churches and helping her secure her first recording deal with JVB Records. Despite her promising musical career, Aretha faced unexpected challenges when she became pregnant, forcing her to drop out of school. The identity of the father sparked controversy, initially believed to be Donald Burke but later revealed to be Edward Jordan through a discovered handwritten will in 2019. During these trying times, Aretha found unwavering support from her father, grandmother Rachel, and sister Irma, who helped raise her children. Her father, in particular, was not judgmental about her youthful pregnancies, providing essential emotional support. In 1956, JVB Records released Aretha's first single, Never Grow Old, marking the beginning of her musical journey. Despite facing another pregnancy in 1957 with Edward Jordan as the father, she continued to progress in her career releasing significant songs like Precious Lord Part 1 and transitioning from gospel to secular music with her father's approval by the time she turned 18. This decision led her to New York City, where Columbia Records executive John Hammond, renowned for signing legends like Count Basie and Billie Holiday, orchestrated her recording contract. Her early sessions at Columbia showcased her extraordinary talent, with tracks like Today I Sing the Blues becoming timeless classics. However, despite her early success, achieving fame in both gospel and pop music proved challenging for Aretha during her time at Columbia Records. She struggled to reach the level of success she desired, leading to feelings of uncertainty and frustration. Then a significant turning point occurred. Shortly after releasing her first album in 1961, Aretha encountered someone special at a Detroit club called 20 Grand. Their connection was strong from the start, and despite doubts from her family, Aretha and Teddy White fell in love, marrying just six months after meeting. However, the commitment she entered proved to be a heavy burden on her young shoulders. In 1964, Aretha became pregnant for the third time, carrying Teddy White's child. Regrettably, their once happy marriage didn't endure. Aretha never openly discussed the troubles in her relationship, but in 1968, a magazine story revealed that Teddy had confronted her in public at an Atlanta hotel, suggesting deeper issues behind closed doors. Their marriage, once filled with love, deteriorated into a difficult and painful relationship marked by fights and abuse. The worst came in 1968 when Aretha found the courage to leave her husband, leading to their divorce in 1969. The scars from this challenging relationship haunted her for the rest of her life. While navigating the stormy waters of her troubled marriage, Aretha's career also faced uncertainties at Columbia Records. 
The path to commercial success became increasingly rugged. With the assistance of producer Jerry Wexler, she finally gained the freedom to create the music she desired. Leaving Columbia Records posed financial challenges, as her music didn't sell as well as hoped. However, undeterred, she joined Atlantic Records, where she achieved remarkable success. Her 1967 album, I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You, recorded at Fame Studios in Alabama, became a massive hit, selling over a million copies. Earned the title of the Queen of Soul, her rendition of Otis Redding's Respect from 1967 became an anthem resonating on personal, sexual, and racial levels. In 1969, a strange incident occurred when Aretha Franklin became embroiled in an impersonation scheme. Another woman performed at various venues in Florida using Aretha's name and charged significantly less. Despite these odd occurrences, her career remained strong. In the early 1970s, Aretha achieved significant successes, including an unforgettable show at the Fillmore West in San Francisco and tours in Europe and Latin America, establishing her as a global music icon. Her 1972 live recording, Amazing Grace, featuring a powerful performance with a choir at the New Temple Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles, is regarded as one of the greatest gospel albums. However, by the mid-1970s, cracks in Aretha's career began to show, making the production of the album Hey Now Hey, with Quincy Jones, a tough endeavor. Despite the success of the single Angela, Aretha Franklin's 1973 album didn't perform as well as expected. While she continued to have RB hits with songs like Until You Come Back To Me and I Am In Love, her albums and songs weren't dominating the charts by 1975. In a significant career move, she left Atlantic Records and joined Clive Davis Arista Records, aiming to rejuvenate her music career. In the midst of her professional pursuits, Aretha opened her heart to love and married actor Glenn Turman on April 11, 1978, at her father's church. However, Tragedy struck on June 10, 1979, when her father, Clarence, was shot by a mugger. This heartbreaking incident left him in a coma for six years, prompting Aretha to make the tough decision to move back to Detroit and care for her ailing father. The pain intensified when Clarence passed away on July 27, 1984, while Aretha was still dealing with the aftermath of her divorce from Terman. Amidst personal challenges, including a flight incident in 1984 that restricted her overseas travel, Aretha released the successful album Who's Zoomin' Who in 1985. However, her relief was short-lived. In April 1988, her sister Carolyn succumbed to breast cancer, followed by the death of her brother Cecil from lung cancer in December 1989. Aretha's struggles with smoking and alcohol worsened in the early 1990s, impacting her health and weight. In 1992, Franklin quit smoking, acknowledging its harm to her voice. However, the cessation led to weight gain, posing additional challenges to her health. Grief continued to haunt her with the death of her older sister Irma in September 2002, and her half-brother Balgan passed away the same year. In 2003, after 23 years with Arista Records, Aretha Franklin established her own record label, Aretha. Her first album with the label, A Woman Falling Out of Love, was released in 2011, marking an impressive 50 years in the music industry. Despite behind-the-scenes difficulties, including health issues that led to cancelled concerts in 2010, Aretha continued to captivate audiences with her talent. Her remarkable performance of My Country Tis of Thee at President Barack Obama's inauguration in 2009 and her rendition of Carol King's You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman at the 2015 Kennedy Center Honors Ceremony showcased her enduring artistry. However, health problems persisted, and in 2018, news of Aretha's serious illness emerged. On August 16, 2018, at the age of 76, Aretha Franklin passed away at her home in Detroit. The cause of her death was a malignant pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, 
marking the end of an era but leaving behind a musical legacy that will be forever remembered.